is a class act, which makes her completely different than all of the rest of us on this stage. <laughs> However, she's not afraid to put her dignity aside, dignity aside and fling herself for the dignity aside. Not afraid to park her boat, a very small dignity, and throw herself at a robot. Ladies and gentlemen, Do you like to boogie? 
Yes. Will I meet you boogie today and see if it sends out a million people worldwide online? Yes. Okay, you're on. Nashville, you asked for it. Give you the choice. You've all signed the NDA now, you can't get away from it. <laughs> or as a fan said to me, a Scottish fan, my first ever convention, she literally said to me, Welcome to the SPN family. Once you're in, you kind of get out. <laughs> Just, did everybody understand my Scottish? Yes. And it's true, right? Yeah. But it's also really good because like, you don't really want to leave, do you? No. Apart from the people who are walking out the door right now. <laughs> Answer a question. And welcome to our lovely sign. Sign is here. Hello. Hello. My name is Onda Luna and I'm a creative writing major. Lovely. Yeah. With well, a name like Onda Luna, I'm not surprised. Thank you. Um, you are an absolutely fantastic woman and I'm wondering if you thought about writing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my demon just. <laughs> demon like. Um, I am trying to write something right now with Lisa Berry. Um, yeah, she's been fantastic. She has been really. Not saying the stage is possessed. <laughs> But like it's like I literally can't cross the salt line. It's really yeah. weird, man. I'm gonna come down to the audience and like I think I'm fat. Like there's a kind of witch's circle here. Um, she's been really busy on a new show about like a modern retelling of Black Beauty, which I hope you'll all watch. Um, I've been super busy too. Okay, hands up who's not going to watch Dead Boy Detectives. Wait, so you're all going to watch it? Yes. I am now, but I So we've been really busy, but we have started writing a pilot um, about, it's called Ruby, which is my grandmother's name, and it's her life story, because she was an amazing woman, and she was the only woman in the Scottish Football Association and she ran a football team for 30 years oh, back in the day. Oh, oh. Would you watch that? Yeah, yeah. A really tough ass Scottish woman telling men what to do. Yeah. And she was very flamboyant. She had her hair up. She was quite stout. Bright colours and bright language. Very, very bright <laughs> language. So I think, yeah, so I would. And I, have, I had another idea for another series. Let me know. You can be my test group, right? And give feedback to the network. Um, I really wanted to write a show about a woman my age, maybe a little bit younger, um, who's like an everyday witch. I don't mean a witch like the black cat. No, you know, I mean like, you know, right? Like the average woman's like, oh, I'm going to buy a crystal for that. And like, <laughs> and like, you know, just an everyday witch, somebody who's kind of like finding out if any of that stuff works, you know, and all the things, and I thought that would, like one week it would be like, oh, you're getting your horoscope read, and there'd be a tall, dark, handsome stranger would be foretold, and then by the end of the episode, it's like, you get to write a horse, and he's the tallest, handsomest, darkest stranger ever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, would you watch that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because sometimes like the everyday magic does work, and then uh, sometimes it goes wrong, and uh, sometimes even bigger magic happens. Is this something I said? Whose photo op is it? No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're forgiven. You're allowed. If it was just Misha, I'd give you a hard time. <laughs> Thank you for your lovely question. Yeah. Good luck with all your creative writing. Thank you. Hands up here who writes stuff, writes her own stuff. Is it you that wrote that fan fiction? <laughs> it's great, just her fun, even. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, you don't know which one? Okay. <laughs> I've only ever read one, that was enough. <laughs> I was like, I, oh, I get it now. 
Rowena's in the library with Sam and God. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> she was with the trickster, but like, okay, hey God, hey God. Hi. Hi. What's your name? I'm James Martin. Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? Where are you from? <laughs> I like that you've got a redhead holding your mind. What's your name? I'm Lindsay. Hi Lindsay, you look gorgeous. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Um, which character would I like to spend a week with in real life? Which character would you like to spend a week with in real life? Castiel. Oh. Castiel or Misha? Castiel. <laughs> He's a lot of fun. <laughs> He's too much fun. Um, I, can't, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Which character? I loved my scenes with Lisa and Deb, but you don't want to hang around Deb too much. It's a little bit risky. Um, I always thought it'd be fun if Jodie and Rowena would meet because I think Rowena would be scared of Jodie. Um, because she, she's a smart woman, but also I think there's a lot of fun that they could have. I think they have a mutual respect for each other. Me personally, I would like to spend some time with Jodie because she seems so nice and motherly and loving. Is that why you like Jodie? She's quite sweet though. Right? Yes. Um, if they cast Michael Fassbender as Crowley's dad, I'd really like to spend time. <laughs> That would be my top answer, but that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> but it could do. Thank you for your question. You're welcome. You're so pretty. Aww. Aww. Thank you. You're so cute. <laughs> How are you all? Woo! Still a wee. This is another redhead on this side. Yes. Oh my goodness. I play the bagpipes as well. You do? I do. What's your favourite song to play? Oh, I'm a scout on the brave. Can you whistle it? Do, 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 do. I, I, got, I got that song into Supernatural. I did, and the director was like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Because I was singing, I was like, and he was like, whoa, 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 we've not the rights to that song, and I was like, it is so old, nobody exactly. owns. You know, we can't get sued for copyright infringement. I love that song. Well, my name is Julian, and I'm here with my uh, beautiful daughter, Aww. Grace, who's a huge fan of yours, as well as mine. Um, I first would like to just say thank you for being such a spectacular role model to my daughter, who, uh, you know, when there's women like you in the business and just out doing what you do, it's, it's, uh, it's great because as a father, you want your daughter to grow up and be strong. You're a good dad. Um, but uh, I was just curious as to what it felt like. You know, I've been to Scotland and, and I love it. But I'm just wondering on the other side, you know, you come into the United States for the first time and what did it feel like? Because I know that you were in the theater and you did a lot of dancing, but then to come and work in the United States and conquer like you have, uh, how did that feel? Like that? Yeah. always have a thing about America. I think a lot of people do. Um, I grew up watching so many American TV shows and, and movies and I genuinely, this is true, when my mum, my parents got divorced, I had this fantasy as a teenager that my mum might marry an American and I could be a teenager in America and be in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> I thought that's what life was like. And the funny thing about that is Ferris Bueller's uh, Day Off was filmed in Chicago, um, was being filmed in Chicago, which is where Rob was at Northwestern at that time. Like I was watching it, you know, and I was like, I wish I could be there. Um, so 
So I always had a thing about America. And I came a few times to visit. You know, I, I did some workshops in New York. I fought on paper. I'm a theater person. New York's my town. But when I came to LA, I just had more luck. It just, it just seemed, and it was warm. <laughs> and you don't go in the tube all the time because I spent 10 years in London. So I bumped. Everyone's thinking about me. I know it's not personal, but it hurts. <laughs> it's okay. Fuck her off. Um, um, when I was on my trip to Los Angeles to see if I would like to live there, I bumped into Billy Boyd in the street. Oh. Um, so funny, right? And I'm like in the boulevard. And I was like, hello. And we had done a workshop together in Scotland when I first was learning to act. When I had just been a dancer, and he was just before he booked Lord of the Rings. We worked together then. And here I am in LA, and I bump into him. And I'm in LA, and I book a pilot back in the UK. And I was like, hey, like maybe it's my time, <laughs> you know. I just, I, I do love America. I do. It is the land of opportunity. In many ways, especially when you do look at the rest of the world, and I know there's a lot wrong, and we've been more divided than ever. But this country can be amazing. It can be. That's why I'm here. I am so grateful to be here. I had to work really freaking hard. I didn't I wasn't allowed the first time. They didn't give me my green card. I had to try again. So I I'm here by choice, very much so, and I'm super grateful to be here and to have this opportunity to be with you all. And I'm super grateful for Supernatural and for all of this. It's changed my life. So I'm I think working hard to be here and appreciating it with your dear. Appreciating being on set, appreciating having a job. I think that, if you can do that wherever you are, it is the way forward to everything you want, wherever you, wherever you want to go. And I just, I love, love your question. Thank you for asking me, giving me the chance to remind myself <laughs> Thank you so how much. happy I am to be here. Thank Thank you. You. Where are you from? Tallahassee, Florida. What do you want? <laughs> so, uh, whenever I came up here and asked uh, Bree and Kim about this, um, I Those asked quiet, them, quiet, shy, retired ladies. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, it's um, I asked them who sort of runs circles around everyone in, the terms, in terms of pranks, either on a show or on the circuit. And they may dropped you, specifically Kim did. She said that uh, you have a history of leaving safety pins in places, and I was wondering if you recently got anyone. I, I, do, I do like to mess around. <laughs> no, Close pins. It wasn't. It was a director in the UK called John Dove who was directed Plus of Shakespeare. During a uh, dress rehearsal, he gives somebody a close peg and starts it, and they do. And there's something about having a point of tension that's not about what you're doing that helps release the tension in your brain from worrying so much about what you are doing. And the brain's actually quite good at that. That's a really good multitasking. And I think that's the thing about pranks, and all that. it's a relief, right? It's something of, yeah, it's fun. But it took me a little while to build up my confidence on set. Um, it took me a while. Um, and I can tell you about one prank that I thought was going really wrong and then Misha saved it. <laughs> so, I take things very seriously on set. I'm very prompt and you know, disciplined. Don't mess around and Jared and Jess are doing all kinds of stuff. All they do is care about the gag reel. <laughs> you swear, that is their pain. They're like filming the scene, but can't we get in the gag reel? Swear. So a few things happened this way, and I thought it's time for one to go the other way. And we did one of Mark Shepard, which is a whole other story, but um, one day it was the end, final episode, final show. So and on set, and I'm sorry for any innocent younger people in the audience, <laughs> there's no way of telling this story without mentioning lube. <laughs> we have what's called lube on set, which is really, stays really moist and is good for holy water. 
all kinds of stuff because it doesn't dry. So it's just a prop, it's just a thing that we have. That's just it. And so anyway, I was supposed to walk onto um, the scene and Darren and Jensen were kind of in the kitchenette down on the main of letters bunker and Misha's over there and I'm supposed to walk in with like a cup of tea or a teapot and be like, okay, right, everyone ready for a nice cup of tea? But the camera's behind me, so I walk in with this gigantic bottle of blue and I'm like, everyone ready for some? <laughs> is they're facing camera and the idea is it's hard for them not to laugh, right? But they all just looked at me like this. Like deadpan, like they're not going to break. So then I started to like be like, oh no, it hasn't worked. I've really embarrassed myself, this isn't funny. And Misha saved the day, Misha standing over here and he went, well I know what to do with that. <laughs> and he picked me and the lube up in his hands and carried me off. Misha, yes, and then me. That's a nice actor, isn't it? When somebody doesn't leave you flat on your face and they make the joke better. So God bless Misha. <laughs> What kind of milk would you like in your latte? Be more specific, be more specific. Um, I can change the question to, uh, I think I've asked you this before in a previous convention, but um, what is something memorable that a fan has done for you? Oh. Um, just want your Oh, you know, I, 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 I get asked a question like this, and thank you. And I, I don't mean any preference against anyone else, but sometimes just something pops into my head, and I go with what pops into my head. Um, and there's a fan called Brittany, who's lovely, and she's a really talented, clever girl. And um, she wrote this short story poem and sent it to me all framed and during lockdown early on when we were trying to think of interesting things to do I read out her poem story on an Instagram a live feed that one of the first ones I'd ever done and it was lovely and it was like I felt like people were entertained and I felt like that was such a beautiful gift such a lovely contribution and very heartfelt so that's a really nice one that I remember. But honestly, I received gifts of chocolate, diamonds, <laughs> sparkling roses, whatever you want, I'm happy. <laughs> I said, don't worry about it. Does that answer your question? Um, I just wanted to see your outfit. <laughs> your, I love your jumper, but then look at your sleeves. What's this? Oh, that is a cardigan. I love your style. Where did you get it? <laughs> Um, you, so you stole something. <laughs> so it might be okay if I steal one from you. <laughs> um, what's the um, signing for? I know what Ruth is. What's the sign? That's Ruth. My dimple. Um, what's Rowena? Rowena, like through my curly hair. Rowena. Oh, cross. Rowena. And like maybe wait. Rowena. That's fine. Rowena's fine. Thank you. Um, I know. Um, and you know the pantomime sim. Excuse me. The pantomime Cinderella. My favorite name is. Hi. Hi. How are 
you are
Vegas there. Yes, exactly. I do somatics. Yes, all of that. Well, it's paid off. Thank you. You look fabulous. And my 31 year old son thinks you are the Casmiel. Oh, thank you so much. So, um, but what I wanted to ask is for a Scottish blessing. For okay. My birthday and for everyone. Um, for, your, for your birthday? For your birthday and just for everyone in general. Scottish blessing. Oh, I'm thinking of. I'm trying to think of what we say at the barn, the barn ceremony. Um, here's to us, was like us, damn few, in their own deed. Do you want to translate that? Please. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Here's to us, there's no one like us. If there is, there are very few and far between, or dead. <laughs> Thank you so much. Here's to us, like us, not to in So it's kind of like going, yeah, here's to us that we're alive and here and toasting each other. Thank you. I forgot where my washer was. <laughs> So we're going through, going through the palace, going through the palace. It was really hot. It was really humid. It was packed. I was starting to panic. Look, we need to leave at three to get back to start the French convention at four. You know what I mean? Whatever it was. So we're going through. See the room of mirrors. It's amazing. It's beautiful, but it's, it's a lot. So I'm like, we have to get out of here. We can't. We can't. We'll never. If we go through the entire rest of the tour, we're screwed. So I'm like, and I, yeah, anyway, I did it. I could see an exit that was back the way a little bit. There's a little bit of a fire exit, but I was like, okay. So I turn around like a fish swimming against the entire rest of the tide. And Rob, being much more of a rule follower than I am, I was like, you can't do that, you can't do that. Like, it's fine, it's fine. Just follow me. I'm, I'm kind of little and I can kind of like swim. I'm kind of swimming against all the other fishes. You know what I mean? And I'm just quite nimble. And he's like, sorry, 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 behind me. And then the next thing he's like, security! Stop those! Stop those people! And there's the French police. Because you can't do that. So anyway, the French security police, like, 
pretty scary too, right? Don't, 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 stop that woman, stop that woman. So eventually, like, I think these kind of surround us and I'm nearly at the exit, like I can see the glass door, I can see fresh air, I can see freedom, I can see me not getting fired from my job. Like it's, it's just there. And um, they're like, sorry, you can't, you can't go this way, no, 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 no. And I was like, well, I really don't, don't feel well. So they, I then had a basically a police escort out straight out of the palace, <laughs> out of the front, long. And uh, Rob was like, are you okay, are you okay? I was like, no. <laughs> I thought you were, <laughs> you thought I just got totally overwhelmed and was actually, it's like, so I must be quite a good actress, really. <laughs> No. It was honestly, I felt bad about it, but it felt like it was like the only way out of the situation. And nobody was really hard or hard or killed. And everybody at the convention was really happy because we got there in time. So that's why I'm defending my. I don't know if that's bad behaviour or just. Or, Clap up. That's what Rowena would say. So yeah, I mean, probably, probably something to just improve, but nobody was hurt, and it's kind of funny. And I did get an escort, escorted out of Versailles by the French police. That's my story. <laughs> when you'll see, I'll never be invited back to France again. Um, hello. Hello. Oh. Hi. What's your name? Emma. Emma. Would you like to ask a question? What's your question? Um, what's your favorite? Jared and Jensen. Aww. My favorite part of acting with Jared and Jensen is when everybody's tired and crabbit. Do you know what crabbit means? Like snippy, snarky. Everyone's tired of crabbit at the end of the night. And there's lots of tension and pressure and the first ladies trying to make sure you get the shot and pizza arrives on set for the late snack and everybody else is getting pizza but you're not getting any pizza because they're trying to get the shots and Jared looks at you and says you look like you want some pizza Ruth and I'm like I really want some pizza and he stops production <laughs> and the first thing he's like you can't stop production and stops production so that you can call and get a slice of pizza and be happy actors. That was one of my favorite memories. I get, I'm telling really bad stories against myself where I'm really demanding. <laughs> I, I didn't ask for the pizza. I would never have asked. I was sad that I wasn't getting any and Jared could just, having, having the empathy that he has, he could tell. And he understands how important pizza is at 10 o'clock in the day. So yeah, he made sure, hi, he made sure that I got some. Do you like that story? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye for him. Have a good time, fellas. I forgot to make you dance. Oh. I just told the palace of Earth, somebody specifically asked about why I was escorted out of France with police escort out of the palace. Really? <laughs> that was really funny, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, but I was like, oh, you feel well. You, you were like, are you okay? I totally bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good actor. I was like, this woman is sick. We have to get her out of here. Then we get outside, she's like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> For that, they were ready to arrest us. Hi. Hey, why were they going to arrest you? I don't, know, I don't think I know the story. So in the, in the, it's, a, it's a very long story. But in the Palace of Versailles, you have to go through it one way, and it was busy, and we were going to be late for the convention. So I just was like, I turned around and went against the tide. And they like, the security, you stop that woman! <laughs> and so they stopped me, so when they stopped me, I was like, oh, I'm gonna help. And so then they were like, oh, okay, and rushed us out the front door. Just clear the way! Someone needs help! And you were already to uh, assist. You, could, you got the depends. Yeah, I gave them out the mouth. You put on your depends. <laughs> Kind of my own event, I gave her mouth to mouth, even though she was breathing fun. 
you're a pig. Uh, I will be clever, clever move, Ruth, and disgusting re response, Rob. I mean, that's, that's, that's the universe answer. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruth. Bye.